Hello athletes and more specifically uh, rowers that are new to the sport which is who this video is going to be directed to. My name is Travis uh, and uh, I use this channel to give some in-depth nuanced information about a variety of training topics. Uh, but I wanted to make this video specifically for those just getting into the sport whether you're a novice on a team or just uh, bought your first indoor rower or maybe even you've been uh, exposed to it a little bit through CrossFit. Um, with a couple points that I wanted to highlight for new athletes that I feel get glossed over or ignored or just not properly explained through other sources. I just I haven't seen this and I think it's very important. Uh, a little bit about me and my background. Uh, I've been coaching professionally for the majority of my adult life. As an athlete I won several national championships at a pre-elite level. I've coached several national champions and uh, many, many national medalists. I actually don't recall the number specifically. Um, and I've set age group world records on the indoor rowing machine, uh, both of which still stand as American records uh, currently. But, uh, and with a lot of those athletes that I coach to a national level, um, I coach them from the very first day on an indoor rowing machine and then their first days on the water all the way up to kind of reaching those those top levels of competition. And the athlete age groups I've worked with have been anywhere from 11 years old, middle school kids, to late 70s uh, masters athletes. And so a wide range of experience and exposure there. And so there's two points of focus that I'm gonna highlight in this video. One is that rowing, unlike other sports, other popular endurance sports, like let's say running or cycling, uh, Rowing requires an extremely high level of technical proficiency to perform it well, all right? And the main reason for that is unlike running where you are producing force with your legs and your legs are in direct contact with the ground to create that propulsion, similar in cycling, uh, you're pushing against the pedals and those pedals are turning the wheel and making the bike go forward. In rowing, you're producing the power through your lower body, all right? So you're pushing through the feet, all right? But it is the handle that you're holding that is gonna impart that force onto the flywheel or onto the erg, which is then in turn going to move the boat. And there's an extremely high technical requirement to efficiently get, a f efficiently get the power from your feet through your body and your arms into that handle. All right? And for that reason, you can't just kind of pick up rowing the same way you pick up uh, running or cycling, all right? which is a little bit more instinctual. Certainly running is instinctual. It is the, the core motion for humans, probably the most important motion for humans. Rowing, not so much. All right? And so for you, I see a lot of people when they pick up the erg, you know, they'll kind of put a cursory attention to kind of the basic technique and then they'll move right into what workout should I be doing? All right, you know, should I be doing pieces? Should I be doing long work? Should I be doing short? Should I be doing long distance? Whatever it is, but that's the wrong question. If you think about if you're just starting running for the first time or you just bought a bike at the store and you wanna start getting out and getting some miles on the bike, then you know, everyone I know knows that you just go out and you start logging in miles. I've never heard anyone say, I just picked up running, but I don't know what kind of track workouts I should be doing. I don't know what kind of intervals I should be doing. I don't know what kind of hill work I should be doing. They know that if you're just starting into running, that you just need to go and you need to be comfortable getting miles in, all right? If you can run for 10 minutes, you need to get comfortable running 30 minutes. If you can run 30 minutes, then maybe get comfortable doing an hour every once in a while, but at least, log in and get comfortable getting a decent amount of mileage in aerobically before you even consider kind of tweaking that performance with any kind of anaerobic training, any kind of intervals, any kind of track work. Same thing with the bike. Um, unless you're trying to be competitive on the bike, you probably don't need to be thinking a lot about doing kind of intervals or lactate work or hill work, whatever it might be on the bike. In rowing though, for some reason, People can like instantly kind of get on that erg and they're like, you know, what kind of wor workout should I be doing? What kind of intervals should I be doing? You know, am I doing one minute pieces or 500 meter pieces or thousand meter pieces or 10 minute pieces or whatever it is? 
that they seem to go to that extremely quickly and kind of the information out there on the internet doesn't help with that all right and so uh you know you get like this p plan or p plan for beginners or you just get people on the forums who don't understand training methodology that are just like you know do this do steady state on these days do intervals on these days it's just a lot of nonsense until you learn how to efficiently row you should not be doing any kind of interval training all right you should just be going out there and learning how to get a good firm aerobic base aerobic miles and then if you can do that and you want to kind of start competing you want to perform at a high level then you can start to ask how can i start to sprinkle in and spice in a little bit of anaerobic stuff but even when you do that it's a very small percentage of your training you know during the base building period anaerobic work makes up i think somewhere around eight percent no yeah eight percent or so of your tr overall training volume very very small percent of your training volume and it doesn't increase it maybe goes up to like 10 or 12 if i recall correctly in an anaerobic phase um so still quite low um you just need to be logging in those miles all right so stop thinking about what i'm doing intervals and doing 500 meter pieces or minute pieces, or whatever and just get there and learn how to produce power and i have another video where i talk about kind of the standard baseline power expectations for new rowers, all right? And I'll kind of link it in one of those. But I talk about the fact that uh, in rowing, um, there is kind of a threshold of power that you can expect to perform no matter how young, old, out of shape, in shape you are. And for men, that generally falls around the 218 range, all right? There is no male athlete, no matter how kind of old, out of shape, I'm going to discount people with any very kind of disabilities that, you know, maybe you can only row arms and body or whatnot or some other thing, but any kind of able-bodied male athlete should be able to produce at least the 218 or split below. And the majority of male athletes should expect to be under 210, kind of in those 205 to 210 range, all right, for decently fit, not super fit, decently fit with decent technique. For female athletes, it's a little bit higher. And so for female athletes, for the majority of female athletes, should be able to produce power in the high two teens, the low two twenties. And at the very slowest, you're looking at kind of high two thirties. Um, anything beyond those ranges, anything for males beyond a 218, anything for females beyond a 240, that is not a sign of your fitness. That is purely a sign that you haven't learned how to apply power efficiently yet. All right, and you need to do that. And you need to do that early in your career, and you need to continue to focus on that throughout your career, because for the most obvious is that no matter how hard you work, if you have a low efficiency, you're getting very low return on that effort of improving your physical ability. So let's say you can produce 300 watts on the ERG, but you're only 50% efficient, then you're only getting 150 watts out of that. And let's say you improve that and you're getting 350 watts. Well, that's a 50 watts is a big, a big step, but you're only getting 25 of those. So now you're only producing 175 watts. You know, if you're 80% efficient producing that 300 watts, you're producing 240. And if you go another 50 again, then quick math, 280. You're up to 280 watts that you're doing. And so you have improved 35 watts if I'm doing my math you know instead of just 25 watts all right and so it's just once you become efficient not only are you going to perform better but also you're going to get more out of all of the physical improvements that you're going to get later all right and so that's why improving the efficiency of stroke has to be key all right and there's lots of videos out there on the internet that talk about the efficiency. Some of them are better than others. You know, there's a lot of noise out there as well, but if you do enough work, hopefully you'll pick up the basics, all right? Is that you need to have a forward body angle as you apply power with the legs, and as the power of the legs declines, you supplement it with the power of the body, and then you establish a long body position before you can press with the legs, and you can press with the legs controlled, and then you begin the cycle again, all right? It's the basic technique of rowing all right and so watch a lot of videos i have a couple on this channel but there's a ton out there on there of how to row well and so consume that don't focus on what intervals you should be doing or what follow along workouts you should be doing just learn how to produce power all right within those ranges ideally 210 uh, range for most males 
ideally 220 range for most females, add a stroke rate in the 16 to 18 range, be able to do that for at least 30 minutes efficiently, and that's where you kind of want to start your rowing career. All right, and so hopefully that helped. All right, forget about that noise, forget about you know the intervals, forget about doing anaerobic repeats or whatever it is. None of it matters until you can get that initial basic standard. And when I'm coaching a team, when I'm coaching novice athletes, um, my benchmark for knowing that I have prepared those novice athletes for the future, for their varsity years or for the continuation of their career is not how fast their 2K is, um, it is, which is an absurd concept. It is, can they row 60 minutes at a high aerobic effort at an 18 stroke rate and row with efficient technique that they sustain for the duration, that that technique does not deteriorate as they move through and get more tired, all right? That is my foundation whenever I'm coaching novice athletes, all right? I have a year to get any athlete, no matter where they're starting from, to row 60 minutes at an 18 stroke rate at a high effort level, sustainably and efficiently. That is the benchmark. And so I recommend that benchmark for people getting into the sport that want to perform. If you're just doing it recreationally, 30 minutes is fine. If you want to do it competitively, you need to be able to do that for 60 minutes, all right? And then once you can do that, then you can start to pepper in a little bit of anaerobic work here and there. But again, it's a very small percentage. This is a power endurance sport, all right, that you found in rowing, all right? Emphasis on the endurance, all right? You need to be able to sustain work for longer periods of time. You need to be able to build that aerobic base. The anaerobic work, the anaerobic capacity is very easy to train. It only takes about four to six weeks of hard training to develop your, uh, your anaerobic capacity. Um, and so you do not need to spend a lot of time in your training cycle working on those type of workouts. Um, you just need to build that aerobic base. And then when it's time to compete, spend two, three months building uh, the kind of transitioning from that aerobic to your race specific training. So hopefully this helped. Hopefully it understand, helps you understand why um, definitely as you get to that point, as you get comfortable with those miles, lots of other videos on this channel to kind of help guide you through that process. I also work with athletes one-on-one -on -one through gtsrowing.com. So check that out if you want some remote coaching, but uh, that is it. Hopefully this helped. Hopefully it kind of gets you on the right path and avoid those kind of, uh, those odd tangents and training that are going to kind of take you down and develop bad habits. Um, but that's it. If you have questions, throw them in the comments below, give the video a thumbs up, whatever you want to do, subscribe. Thanks for listening. I appreciate your time and uh, good luck in your training. Bye.